Let us now take a look at another example involving pattern 3. This problem statement is quite complex, so let us take a few minutes to read it together. We are, as always, told that this function is buggy since we are dealing with a refute problem. But the function is supposed to calculate the maximum profit given some sort of list of prices. So the basic idea is pretend we have, let us say, some stock and for some reason we know its price in the future. This would be very helpful because of course then we could maybe try and buy some of this stock and then later sell it. Of course, we should make sure that we try and buy it for a low price and sell it for a high price and then we would try and get some profit. So this function is trying to calculate the maximum profit that could have been achieved given a list of prices. And it is returning a tuple. It's returning a pair of integers. And it tells us that the function is supposed to return the single best pair of days to buy and then later sell this stock. So of course, we can't cheat by buying late and selling early. That would be reversing the order of time. We have to buy first and then later sell that stock. So we have to find the best days on which to buy and sell the stock in order to earn a max, the maximum profit. So the best day would be some index i to buy and then some later index j to sell. If no profit can be made, then we have to return the special pair minus 1 minus 1. So let's first take a look at an example because there is more to this doc string. The example is, let us say we're given this list of prices. Since the maximum value here is 7 and the minimum value here is 1, it would be wonderful if we could sell on day 0 and buy on day 1 because then we would earn 6 rupees or whatever the units are over here. But remember, we can't sell before we buy. So if we want to buy at this low price of one unit, we can only sell after day one. We will have to let go of the stock on day zero. We would buy it on day one, let us say. Now if we sell it on day two, we would earn a profit of five minus one, which is four. But if we hung on to the stock until we reached day four, then we could sell it uh, for a higher price, six units, and then of course we would earn five units of profit, which is why for this list of prices, the best day to buy and then later sell is buy on day one, sell on day four. So I hope you get the general idea. But now there are some more details in the doc string, so let us take a look at that. So we've already said that if no profit can be earned, uh, then we have to return minus one, minus one. In this case, of course, we were able to earn some profit. But it then says, if the maximum profit can be earned in more than one way, then we have to return the closest pair of days. Intuitively, the way to think about this is, once you buy something, then you have committed some of your financial resources towards that stock and you want to quickly uh, recover those uh, resources uh, when you sell the stock. So you don't want the gap to be very big. So if you have a situation where you can buy for one unit and sell for six units, but there are two such opportunities, we want the narrowest such pair of days, the closest such pair of days. And even if we are interested in the closest such pair of days, that same uh, closeness might happen multiple times. So the dog string goes on to say, if there is more than one such closest pair, then we want to return the one with the earliest buy day. Again, the intuition is, well, if there is a way to earn this profit by uh, committing your resources for a few days here, and then again, you can earn that same profit in the future. Well, let's try and get that profit early. Let's put that profit in our bank account as early as we can. So that is the intuition. 
Finally, the dog string reminds us that these have to be non-negative prices. And again, this is a list of integers. So let's try and see if we can refute this code. Let's take a look at this code and see if we can first recognize pattern 3. As we can see, there are two nested for loops. And we have seen this pattern before. For i in range len of prices, so i will loop over all legal indices in this list. And then for j, that comes after i. This is critical because remember, we can only sell after buying. So day i is going to be the day on which we buy and day j is going to be the day on which we sell. So this is pattern 3. It is trying all possible pairs i and j where i comes first and j comes later. Now before we look at the body of these for loops, let's quickly take a look at how we have initialized our variables. We have said max profit is 0 and best days is minus 1 minus 1. So this is like saying we haven't yet seen any opportunity to make profit. This might remind you a little bit like we are back to pattern one. We're going to search until we hit some success. But this pattern is a little bit more sophisticated. In fact, you should think of these variables, max profit and best days, marking the best answer. They're not accumulating something necessarily, but they are saying so far, this is the best answer that we have. Now we will search, we will search uh, for all values of i and j. For that value of i and j, let's calculate the profit. What is the amount of money we can make by buying on day i and selling on day j? So of course, that is this difference. Now we check if this amount of profit is more than the maximum profit we have seen so far. And if it is, rather than accumulating an answer, we just want to replace the answer that we already had. Max profit should now be equal to this new better profit. And the best days on which to do this are for this value of i and for this value of j. And we keep doing this for all i and for all j. And finally, whatever is the best answer we get, we will return that. Remember that best days may never change from its original value of minus 1, minus 1. Meaning, we never found a profit. And that is exactly what the dog string tells us to do. It says, if you weren't able to find a profit, then you have to return minus 1, minus 1. So this code looks all right, at least for much of what the doc string is telling us. The problem, of course, is it doesn't handle all these special cases. Now, which one is it? I want you to try and find out. And I want you to try and ask ChatGPT if it can figure out where the error is.